Welcome back to the channel and in this video we're going to be making a some people call it a thread all some people call it a stud but that's what we're going to be creating here in SolidWorks. Now before I get started the way we're going to be creating this is going to be using a sweep. Anytime we're dealing with sweeps always remember profile and a path and in this case the path is going to be a helix. You can see down there at the bottom right there is going to be a cutter profile so think of this as your tool that you're going to use to spin around this cylinder to cut away and remove from that and create this stud. All right, so let's go ahead and jump over to SolidWorks and get started. Okay, so the units that we'll be using in this one is going to also be inches. So I'm going to start off by clicking this new button here. We're going to create a new part. Let's go ahead and hit the OK button. And then here at the bottom right, we're going to go ahead and change the units over to the inch, pounds, and seconds. All right. Now let's start off by creating our cylinder. So we're going to do that by going to the Sketch tab here. Go ahead and select Sketch. I'll go ahead and select the top plate sorry the top plane let's go ahead and make a circle gonna go from this center and then we're just gonna place a dimension on it of 0.25 okay all right so this is gonna be mainly the main topic that we're gonna use to create the the big cylinder that everything is going around let's go ahead and finish it or exit out of this sketch it's going to kind of rotate this up and then we're going to take a look at the feature tab. I'm going to hit the extrude button. The overall distance of this is going to be set to one. Now I'm going to go ahead and specify this as a mid plane since I want it to go both ways and then we'll go ahead and give it its height of one. All right, so that's all we need to create the cylinder part of this. So the next thing we need to do is go ahead and create the cutter profile. Now the plane that I'm going to use for that will be the plane that's cutting through it, right? So we can use this right side plane or we can use the front plane. Either one. Doesn't matter to me. I'm just going to go ahead and select the front plane and I'll create a sketch on it. Now once again, I usually would put the chamfers before I do this step, but I'm going to go ahead and bring those chamfers in later just so you know that I didn't really forget about it. I always like to show you how to pause or, or, or kind of hide some of the, the features as opposed to, you know, doing them all in order. So you can jump around sometime. Okay, let's go ahead and create this cutter profile. Now remember this thing is created. And let's go ahead and over exaggerate it a little bit. So it looks something like this. Okay, so that's my basic cutter profile, right? I know that this line here is vertical. I'm also going to do the angle. So I know that the angle between here and here is going to be 60 degrees. And let's see what else do we know. And we also know that these two have to be in line with each other. So let's escape out of that. Let's go find the midpoint here. And then hold down the shift button and find the midpoint here. And just go ahead and make both of those horizontal. All right, now we're ready to start putting some of the other dimensions on here as well. So let's go ahead and put this dimension that's on the front part. And this should be a nice small number, so 0 0.0062. And then we're going to do the distance. So we have a distance from here to here. And that has a distance of 0 0.0325. All right, so that's all that I need to do for the cutter profile. Okay. I have to figure out and decide where do I want to basically put this cutter profile. I know one thing about it is that the edge of this needs to be perfectly in line with this. So. That being said, let's go ahead and put a dimension 
from this origin to the back of here. And then we're going to specify this distance as 0.125. Okay. And now I need to specify where is this going to be. Now I'm going to do something uh, on purpose. Right. I want to set this up to where this is just a little bit down from here. Because when I'm cutting this, I like to start it a little bit below it and have my, my cut profile of my sweep go a little bit past my object. So what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to add a line that goes right across from that midpoint to this midpoint. Okay. And then I'm going to select this line. I'll make it a construction line. Let's go ahead and give a, a dimension. So I'm just going to use a dimension from that bottom face to this line here. And let's just go ahead and make it a distance of one. Okay. So now I have my cutter profile, right? And I kind of, you know, really moved this thing down. I don't think it needs to be one. Let's go ahead and make this number 0.5. That was a little bit too much. I keep forgetting that this part, the total height of it is set to one. So let's just go ahead and make it 0.5. All right. Let's go ahead and exit out of the sketch. Okay, so there's my cutter profile. What I'm going to do next is I'm just going to go ahead and create a plane. I'm just going to come to the reference geometry and then I'll select plane. I'll go ahead and select this face here. And you can see that I have this line here. Now yours may not be jumped down to one. I'm just going to go ahead and change this number here to 0.5. And let's see, it's acting like it doesn't want to go. Oh, I'm sorry. I picked the wrong number here. 0.5 here. And that'll move it back to here. So I'll, what I'm trying to achieve is have this going right through the middle of here. And it did exactly what I wanted it to do. Let's go ahead and hit the check mark here. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and select this plane. Once it is okayed. Let's see, what did it say? It says enter. Oh, the number is. I don't see why it's trying to hold me up when I do have a number of one sitting there. Okay. And there it is. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and put a sketch on this plane. So I'm just going to select it here. I'll go ahead and create a sketch. Remember that when we create a helix, we got to have a circle to start with. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a circle. I'll use this exact same diameter that I used to create my cylinder. So this one has a diameter of 0.25. All right. So that should be all that I need to do to create that part. Let's go ahead and exit out of the sketch. And now let's go ahead and take a look at what we have created. Okay. So you can see that I have a plane. And then I have a cutter profile that's located underneath it. Underneath where it says curves, you should find the helix and spiral. Once I have that selected, you can see that it has a height and a pitch. So that's going to be the option that I'm going to use. Now remember that our overall height of this thing, of our cylinder, is 1. I moved down 0.5, so my number has to be greater than 1.5, right? So I'm just going to make this height a distance of 2. And then I'm going to go ahead and specify that my pitch is going to be 0 0.05 okay and you can see that update here in my screen let's do one other check here and I'm going to zoom in to where where this is and I want to make sure that it is starting right at where my cutter profile is and you can see that here so I have the line that's going right to where it starts at all right so everything here looks good let's go ahead and hit the check and now we should have everything satisfied now remember, I forgot to put those chamfers on. You can do them now. You haven't put any kind of cut or anything in them. So I'm just going to go ahead and add those chamfers in now. So I'll go to the chamfer command. The chamfer distance should be 0 0.0313. And I'm going to have this at both ends. So I'm going to find that edge. And then we're going to come down here to the bottom and we're going to go to that this edge. 
Okay, so both of those are going to be the edges that I'll use. I'm going to hit the OK button on that. And now we're ready to create our cutter profile, right? So we're going to use the sweep cut. Once I select it, it should automatically find one or the other. In this case, it found neither. So I'm just going to go ahead and go with the path first. Well, I'm sorry, the profile. The profile is going to be here at the bottom. Now it's asking me what path do I want to use. I want to use the helix that I created as my path. Give it a couple of seconds and it should go around and cut. And now if I go ahead and hit the OK button here, it should subtract from my cylinder and I'll give it a couple of seconds. And you should have that cutter profile going through it now. Okay, let's go ahead and hide my helix here. And then let's go ahead and take a look at this thing going straight on. So you can see now I do have that cutter profile. I forgot to also hide my plane here. So now you do see that that is that that shape basically cut through this, right? Let's go ahead and make it into an isometric. All right. So thank you for watching this one. As I said before, this was a nice, simple, easy thing for us to do. As long as you kind of understand what you're creating and how you're creating it. Now, I didn't have to have it extending that far down, but I did that just so it can kind of has a, a, a really nice start to it and then it'll have a really nice end to it. But that's kind of one of those optional steps. So if you start it right there at the bottom, it would still give you, you know, the same thing. All right. So thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it. As always, keep drafting and I will see you in the next video.